Hi guys, Dorota Palitska, International Nail Artist and Educator here and I have prepared an absolutely amazing one-stroke rose for you. Have we previewed them here? It looks fantastic, almost like a picture. And I hope you will really enjoy learning this technique because it's one of my favorite ones. So let's start. We will play with a little bit more advanced design, like a jointed in one, and I hope guys you will really like it. So I choose two, two, two seashell color, which is a really beautiful gray, and I think it will look really fantastic in a combination of the pinks and purples. So I'm just painting a nice and thin layer. Actually, I can see it. I might get away with the one coat, which is awesome. Such so a time saver. And then give it a cure. Prepare my, my other tips. Cook it as well. It's a really nice and pretty color. I remember actually we did it some nice uh, pink and gray nails in the past. They were absolutely amazing. I actually need to search them. They were the lace ones. Really pretty. So I cannot wait how this ones will turn out because it's a similar color combinations. Okay, I also want to add some sparkles through it and I find it out the Aurora Flakes are actually uh, the most amazing way to create a simple um, but a really pretty nail art. Of course we are going for some pinky-ish look and I'm just slapping them here and there, just a little bit of it. Because this design is a little bit more advanced, I'm going to use um, some top coat over it just so I can paint the next design easier because the flakes um, are a little bit sticking out. I mean, they are quite flat, but they still do stick out a little bit. So this is a matte top coat, just a really thin layer to make the things easier. and then do it on the other nails. So in here I'm gonna place them slightly different. Brush it in and then top coat it. it and do the same on this one okay the first one is ready some flakes into this tip. And top coat it. And then I'm just going to grab my um, gel paints because they, they are fantastic for, um, like they are really highly pigmented and you can still paint some one stroke with those gels. So the blue. Some red. And of course white. Also the drop of yellow. And you can create any color out of it. So if I take a scoop of blue and mix it with yellow, of course I get a green. 
and then if I mix those two together I will get a purple and the most important color for us white of course Okay, happy with that. We can even darken up, like kind of make our green a little bit more dirty. Grab my tips. Now I want to kind of pick up them in the right order. So this one is quite nice on its own and we can just keep it on the side. This one will be really pretty for the design. So does this one for the design and then this one can go no, we need to do it that way. There we are. So I'm not bothered about those two because our main painting is going to be uh, on those two tips. And we are going to grab the one stroke level uh, one brush, also some purple color as well. I cannot use the gel polishes on their own because they, they are just too thin in the consistency. They wouldn't mix uh, well enough. So that's why I needed the gel. Uh, gel paints um, to make the things um, better. And what I'm doing now is I'm picking up my purple with this dark purple and I'm mixing this together here. So this way I can get a really nice and thick consistency on my brush. And then let's start painting the rose. So what we want to do at first is we want to have some darker background here in the middle. I can even use this color. And then my other rose is going to be on the top. So again, I'm just painting this darker color in there. Fantastic. Okay, straight away on this one, we are going to paint the mm, petals which are outside. So really nice and slow motion to create a first petal. Okay, happy with this one. Leave almost a tiny wee empty space. And then keep brushing your paint into the next petal. Give it a little twist to it. and then start another one. Pick up a mixture which is slightly different color because I don't like the petals which are exactly the same. And then we have to give it a cure to it. Okay, paint the outside petals now here as well. So I'm just going to use a slightly different color combination. I have added a little bit more of those very dark color. And just painting a petal on the top and then another one. Again, keep this dark color. And paint another one.
give it a cure. Pick up the green because we also want to do some leaves in there. But I'm not going to clean my brush actually, guys. And the reason for it is I want to have like things in the same kind of tonation, same tones. And then we are going to paint some leaves. You can see they are green, but they are very dirty green. Just a touch of the brush with the tip and then go back. Let's do one more on the bottom. And then paint a couple leaves in here. So romantic. I'm just going to add a very small leaf in here. So it's a kind of almost a continuation of our design. Okay, we can move on into the next step. Now I want to clean my brush again. So I have used a drop of the UV cleanser to clean it. And then pick up the colors again. So next step is I want to go a little bit lighter. Little bit, Dorota, little bit. <laughs> okay, that's enough. And then we want to start painting the inside of the rose. So I'm trying to don't use this part of the brush, only the tip of the brush. And then go other direction. And we have painted the inside of the flower. Actually, let's make this one even longer. very slowly. Time to cook it. And let's do it here as well. Okay, so this is a part which I'm going to use for the middle of the flower. Just a tiny touch. Then go inside and around it. Give it a cook. And then start painting another petal. So now I can paint the petal which I'm missing here. And the reason why I didn't paint it, I wanted it to start in that part. So we need to go back to our previous mixture of the colors which was here. Okay, I've got a decent amount of the product. And then this petal is here. And I wanted it to go all the way up to here. Then leave the gap and paint another petal. Again, leave the gap and paint another petal. I 
another petal here. Look at the angle of my brush. I cannot go like this. I want to paint it with almost a straight brush. And then blend this color here. Okay, give it a cook to our rose. <coughs> and do exactly the same in here. So one petal, another petal here. And then cure it. Okay, on this one, I'm gonna straight away swap to the D-liner brush and just add some more details through it. Nothing over the top, just a couple of the branches. I want to make the green really dirty just so the things go really together. Lighten it up. But it's not a pure white, it's a very dirty white. Just to highlight some, some places. Give it a cure. Okay, straight away, same in here. And then add the DRT detail. So all sorts of different colors here going on. Do the same in here. clean my brush just because it's overloaded with the product. Okay, so this is our third tip and I can see I've got some detail like going on in here. So I just need to pick up a similar place and just add some detail which joins the things together. So this is some sort of leaves.
cook it. Check this one because this one is joining with that tip and I can already see it, it doesn't join well because I'm missing kind of a tiny bit of the leaves in here. So straight away going to pick up my green and I need to paint those leaves here. So there is a one which is coming from that part and then another one which is there and there. Something which really just joins them in. Now I've got dilemma actually. Do I want the matte or shiny? <laughs> what do you think, Patrick? <laughs> Matt? We could actually go and play even more fancy, like go and do matte on the background and then only shiny rose. <laughs> okay, now we are gonna pick up our white, mix with the tiny bit of those pink and purple here. But obviously more white, it's just a kind of very dirty white. And finish off with the detail. More dirty. Very little. Okay, that's plenty. No, maybe not. One more here. Just to separate this petal a little bit more. the detail here. So I'm just doing a little twist on this rose, highlighting this top. Again, highlight the top. And some of the petals. You have to kind of find which way they are going. This one is hiding there. This one is really nice. We don't want to break it. So I need to clean my brush because I feel like it's overload with the product. So I have removed all the product from my brush. And I've got just a tiny bit. Look all this detail. Okay, that's enough. Don't be too fussy, Dorota. <laughs> yeah, they all finished and and I'm gonna do something which I never done it before actually. I'm gonna keep shiny and matte on the one nail. So what I want to do it is oh gosh. Uh, yes, I know first matte. And then the rose would need to be shiny. So, but I had matte, so I didn't have to apply matte. 
that was pointless. Okay, I'm, I did the mistake, I can see it now. What I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna take a top coat and just top coat my shiny parts. Just because I'm not sure if I cook it or not, I'd rather to cook it again. So, what we need to do now is do our rose shiny. Take a very clean brush so it doesn't have a residue from the paint. So I'm just cleaning it with the top coat. And then going over my painting. Just go over my painting with the top coat. So the background is going to be nice and matte. And then those shiny places showing through it. Yeah, I absolutely didn't have to put the top coat over the previous tip because it was already top coated. I would say it's quite time consuming process, but I want to see the finished results because it's something different. But at the same time, it's a little bit of shame to don't have those sparkly bits of bits and pieces of the glitter. Okay, happy with this one. Let's cook it. And then I will see it if I actually like it or not. Because um, I also like the shiny version as well. Oh, no. So, which one you like better? I actually like it just like this. Yeah, they're already nice. They're already nice. But the only trouble is, I mean, if I wouldn't use the gel polish and I would paint it only with the gel arts, I wouldn't have to top coat it. They would last because I have done it in the past. <coughs> so probably, yeah, we should just use the gel. Oh, no, I'm just gonna make them shiny. Let me know, guys, in the comments, like, actually, which version did you, did you like the most? Uh, but no, I'm just gonna go for shiny. Yes, shiny all over. Because I always have dilemma. I know. It's difficult to decide. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love it the way it looks the now, but as I say, because we have used the gel polish, no, I love it now as well. Yeah, that was a good decision. But yeah, let me know, guys, which versions did you like the most? Um, and also, I have shown you something different as well. That is not a big deal. We can just top coat this one. So with this tip, because we have applied the matte top coat, I'm going to use the UV cleanser and remove that. And also, you know what? Now I can see it that this would last as well and it, would be, it wouldn't come off. But yeah, I want to show you all the completed design together because that's when it looks absolutely amazing because it's like a picture, uh, miniature pictures painted on the, on the nails. And then let's stop coat this one entirely. <laughs> really nice and pretty. checking how it looks and then check the final results. Okay, that's them all cooked. So let me place them the way they should be. So we've got this one here and that's this side. Then we have this one. So that goes in here. This one goes in here. And this one goes there.
Yes, I know I am too fussy, like placing them in, but I think it's really important that they are put in the right direction. Uh, that's what we have created, guys. Uh, you can see it really nice and pretty, like the sparkles is showing through it. And also the roses are really nice and beautiful. I hope guys you have really enjoyed this tutorial. Sending you huge glittery hugs and see you in the next video.